what's up you guys welcome to book club of bay today we're talking about cry wolf which is the first book in the alpha and omega series um and i didn't read the novella beforehand but i kind of gather what happened by the way spoilers because this is not spoiler free book review with bay it's book club with bay and in book club you talk about the book and what happened in the book yes and you get to hear me do funny accents, and that's the point. <laughs> um, we okay. Well, just we won't go into it yet because we can do that later. But I just need to before we get into it. Charles's voice. Okay, now we can. Discuss. Well, you know what? Yeah, we'll get into that. But okay, yeah. here's the thing. I'm convinced that Patricia Briggs wants to be raped. <laughs> <laughs> because what? the MC has been really abused and raped. She has like a fascination with rape and doodles. Yeah. So, and it's annoying as fuck. I, yeah, I I did read the novella and so far I I can say though, at least with this one. It serves much more of a purpose than Mercy's. Yeah, and I agree with that, and it makes a lot more sense. But anyway, yes. before we get into all of that, let's, of course, do um, the ratings. Hi, Chester. Yeah, I got a vape pen. By the way, next time I fucking see you, um, you're getting a cloud of smoke in your face. And I'm going to feel super bad about it, like, five seconds after it happens, because that's not nice. But it's revenge, and you deserve it. Anyway, um, <laughs> um, yeah. So, did we want to go number ratings with this one or food ratings? Yeah, I want to go number ratings because I like Patricia. That's what Bird. I was thinking. Okay, I'm gonna go, and don't kill me. Three point five out of five. Out of five stars, not out of ten. Three point five out of five. I was gonna say out of ten. What is wrong with you? <laughs> no, I meant that's why because we're going with stars because like we're reviewers, like real yeah. people. <laughs> <laughs> we try and be a bit more legit with our Patricia Briggs ones, Briggs ones at least, rather than just being like this was like stale candy. Um, <laughs> I'm probably gonna go a four. A four? Okay. I enjoyed right, it, and maybe that could also be because I read the novella. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what, the novella, like, honestly, I knew what happened because it explains it well enough, and I'll go back and read the novella, but I'm, I put it down at 3.8, because here's the only reason why I gave it a 3.5. There was a point at the end of the book where I was like, is it over yet? It did keep on feeling like it was about to happen, like the thing was about to happen, and then it didn't. And that frustrated I'm not gonna lie, me. That did happen. I was like, "Are we done?" I'm because I'm done. Like, I get it. I get what happened, and I'm yeah, done. Like, yeah, you know how like books are normally like you know like you know intro and then like big thing and then intro and then like sad bit and then it goes and then it slowly yeah, builds like the and then it arc, climaxes. Well, the typical arc for a Patricia Briggs or a Mercy book, anyway, is like, "Here's the world, and we're baking cookies." All right, shit just hit the fan. And then you have like a dip, and then like more shit hits the fan, and then you have like another dip, and then we have like the end. Yeah, Whereas um, this was like this was okay, the- this was like a slow burn, which if you've paid it, if you've you know been here a while or you've read any of my writing, which some of you may or may not have, you know that I do like slow burn type books. Like that's why yeah. I like Twilight. And that's why when y'all are yeah. like, can you read Twilight and Bash it? I'm like, nah, because I like it. Um, <laughs> I like the buildup, but this like tries to slow burn without actually doing it, kind of. Yeah, but then, I, but then I feel like as well, like when I kept on feeling like the big climax was about to happen, it j- it just kept going. Like it was kind of like on a slightly upward trajectory for yeah. a bit too long a period. Yeah. Which drug, which drugged, drag, drug, whatever. It, something, drug. you know what I mean. Drag. It made the ending drag out longer than it needed to. But I did, <laughs> I did like it. Like I said, I'm 3.8 out of 5 stars. Oh. Like that's. Sorry, just addressing. 
vape equals popcorn lungs, less than cigarettes. Just saying. Um, and you have to have like an entire thing of these in like an hour to have enough popcorn lung inducing stuff. My pen is pink, um, that's all that matters to me. I know, I need to get a new one because I've dropped this a few too many times. I don't know if you can see, but it wobbles now. Oh no, it should, hi, Super Steven. It shouldn't wobble, that's bad. Um, okay, so. Still works. Um, I did like it. Oh, yeah, so. where we are, because we always talk about the timeline, this takes place right after Moon Called. And I'm actually going to look up, I meant to do this earlier. Um, I think it, yeah, because the novella kind like, I think overlaps the very, very mm -hmm. end of Moon Called. Yeah. All right, I'm going to look up the reading order, and you would actually get some some interesting... Yeah, you get you get stuff about characters that we know, and I like it. That's I like what, one it, of the things I, I really like. Liked. It. Okay, I like. I don't want. I we got a ton of information about Bran, and we'll go into that. And I don't know how I feel about that. I was like, I'm, I'm not, kind of. I I I kind of liked it. One thing I couldn't get over though was because the Moor is in this. And yeah, Azil. I'm just like, it. and I'm yeah, and I'm just like, he's Muslim. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. That's I awesome. almost died when he Allah who are God. <laughs> I did, too, because I was, like, in my head when he said... Because, like, the narrator does it, like, <laughs> properly, where the narrator's like, Allah who are And I was like... And something explodes. Like, <laughs> like, my brain is just wired that way now because I talk about yeah. politics all the time. So my, my, my thing was... My immediate thought was... Well, I had one and then I had another one and they both abused me because they both happened at almost the exact same moment so I got double amused first one was I said no lettuce <laughs> I am gonna make a something in Arabic t-shirt because Bay and I have just you have to do that <laughs> every time I see, I see like news headlines they're never like he shouted Allah Akbar they're always like he shouted Peter, hi. Hi, Peter. Anyway. Um, <laughs> he shouted Peter. He shouted Peter. Anyway, they were like, he shouted something in Arabic. And I'm like, what? What did he and, fucking yeah. shout in Arabic? What did he shout yep, in Arabic? So we were, My dog died. Like, what? We, you so know we what he shouted, you asked. We translated the word something into <laughs> Arabic. And so I'm going to make a T-shirt that literally says the word something in Arabic because I think it's fun. I'm hilarious. Anyway. Um, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. Um, okay. But back to yeah, this. Yeah, so. thought was – oh, wait. The other my, – my second thought was that it that explosion happened three scenes too early because there actually is an explosion. It just already happened. <laughs> it would have been funnier if he was, like, praying and then all of a sudden. Like something else is exploding, <laughs> whatever. Um, is, okay, back to okay, the story. So Let's get into characters. Okay, we'll do we'll do Charles first because people already know something about him. Um, Charles is main character number one. Oh uh, yeah, the, is other thing, the woo woo son of Bran. Right. The other thing that I think is important, maybe a little bit, is that it's um it's written in third person. Which really gives you the sense that this is genuinely the mercy verse and that nobody else actually matters as an MC. And I don't know if she's going Kinda for that. Yet. But I'm just saying. And it's it's something that every like if you're gonna have spin-offs of a series, it's something that you as an author have to figure out whether or not you want new main characters or whether or not you want it to revolve around the original main character. But Well, I think part yeah. of the reason is because there's no clear point of view perspective in this, like because it all yeah, turns. Yeah, I was about to. Oh, sorry. No, yeah, I was about to get into that sorry. because I was going to say the other thing is that there are clear advantages to writing in third person because a first person story doesn't necessarily translate to other mediums better, like as very well, like a. Uh, TV shows or movies, because in TV shows and movies, you know, you hop around. You're like, all right, this person's doing something important. Now this person's doing something important. We don't need to hang out with them right now. Yeah. And when you're writing in third person, you can do that. If, yeah. Because there are some times where, like, we jump to a scene and we only see a scene with this person once, but it's important 
So you go watch it. So it operates a little bit more like a movie, but because I'm so used to listening to things that are in first person, I have to listen a lot harder because all of a sudden I'm like, when the fuck did we get to Bran? I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah, because she's... Because one thing I've noticed as well is like a lot of this seems this isn't actually a negative thing, but generally I always refer back to House of Night when I'm talking negative stuff. <laughs> um, it's just the perfect example. Yeah, of like so many wrong things, but late in later on in the series they start having different perspectives, mm -hmm. and it. But it's like chapter one, Zoe. Chapter two, Aphrodite. Chapter three, Zoe. Like and it tells you yeah. whose perspective it is. This one it doesn't, and it and it changes perspectives mid scene sometimes. Yeah, and so you're just like, so, Wait, so what? And you know, for me, sometimes I'm half listening because I'm like, I listen to audiobooks when I drive as well. So like, yeah, I was like, I had to back it up a couple of times, like I said, because I'm just not used to it. So it's not necessarily a bad thing, but you also end up with also without a very clear MC, because the other way to do third person is to still follow one person around. Yeah. And not really bounce. But she bounces all over the place. It's fucking bouncy counts. Yep. Counts and I am so glad, though, that I did not, that, like, that we didn't read any of these books, like, even at all. No, me too, Before actually. we read. Because um, I think it ruined oh, it. Oh, well, not just that. Like, what's the oh, frig, um, what's the name of the last book in Mercy? Uh, Silence Fallen. That one. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I think. Right. Yeah, Silence what's, Fallen. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, let me make sure I that think, is <laughs> okay. I, was like, I think that the brand plot twist would have been less. Would, yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, it would have been. Had I read this book first. Because it, it, this book actually really goes into how Bran can completely come off. A, and that's, I'm a little off, bummed about that. As a submissive. I'm a little bummed about that because there's so much we don't know about Bran just by reading the Mercy books. And I like it. And we know more about him. And it's... Like, part of me wishes that there were no more Mercy books coming. Just so then that way, just in case there's anything else that could be spoiled. Because honestly, as well, the stuff with the Moor, he was like the mystery of it all in Mercy. Like if I'd read this book before I read the book that he was first introduced in as well, I would have been yeah. like, oh, it's him. Yeah, you demystify I can never actually a remember bunch of his actual name, Azil. Azil. Yeah, you demystify a ton of yeah. characters. And I... And that's also why I'm like, I'm not ready to give it like a solid four because I'm, I don't want all these characters like demystified. It's making, it's bumming me out. Um, well, I, I, I like them demystified in the context of this series so far anyway. Yeah. But I like how they are in the Mercy book. So I'm, but I've really enjoyed it. Cause like, there's like, it's one of those things where, um, and it's one of those things where it's like, I like this character. I want to know more about them. And I'm glad I get to know more about them. But yeah, at the same time, yeah. it might make them less fun to read in Mercy. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, like, I don't want yeah. to know anything about them more. But I was kind of like, you know, had I read this beforehand. Because in I don't seven, know, it's so in tragic. Seven, uh, Azil comes <laughs> back in Frostburn. Azil comes in to play in the Mercy books in Frostburn. And in Frostburn, yeah. you're like, who the fuck be this uh, person and what what's he going to fucking do? Like, you have no idea. You're just like, is he going to, is he okay? Is he safe? Whereas had you read this first, you'd be like, oh, it's just fucking Azil. Yeah, I think. Who cares? I mean, I like where in Mercy this takes place, like timeline wise I, I like i have no issue with that i'm just glad that i read mercy first yeah no the timeline's fine i just like like you said i'm glad i read it first because otherwise you wouldn't be because like azeal and uh frostburn kind of puts you on the edge of your seat where you're like yeah what's he gonna do and then yeah. if you read this first you're like oh i know all about him and it's like okay yeah 
I mean, so, I think if I was going to do a, a reread in the future, I'd listen to them in chronological order because yeah, I like as far that. As when they take place, yeah, same. But, but first time reading, if you have, if you have not read any of the books, one, why are you listening to a spoiler filled thing? And two, read Mercy first. Yeah. Um, um, so far, there are 10 Mercy books. And we've done all of them. Yes. All right. So, um, oh, yeah, characters. That's what we're doing. We, yeah, sorry, that went, <laughs> we went places. <laughs> Uh, so Charles, yeah. Charles is like you said, the woo-woo son of Bran. We also find out in this book that Bran is over thirteen hundred years old, which is old as fuck. Potentially, they don't potentially. Yeah, because the they, Moore is they, they definitely thirteen hundred. Yeah, they real fuzzy on the deets, but um. Well, it, it doesn't even seem like Charles knows because, like, he points out in this book that he that Br like Bran won't really tell him anything. Well, because Bran doesn't really talk any further back than, say, 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they um, established but that. When he, yeah, but when he was younger, um, Sam used to tell him some stories. So Right. And Sam also be old as fuck. Yeah, because he was born when Bran was still human. Human. And we also, okay, well, we'll get into that. We'll get into yeah. Bran and Samuel in a sec, but let's... um. Yes. Focus, focus on Charles. So Charles, we've—I don't think we've ever been told the name of his mom. I don't think so either. But oh, Mama is, is a Blue Jay woman, that's which had probably me like, a tribe. No, no, no. Is that a tribe or is that a no, name? Blue like, Jay that's, woman. That's her fucking name. And I was like, Oh, well, it's an old school like, woo woo name. Well, I know, but like, I was—I don't know. Um. Oh. That's her name, but she, and Charles, if you Is don't that know brain this, really bad on your end. What? Is the sound of the oh, rain bad on your end? Yeah, I can't hear it. Oh, I can't excellent. Hear it at all. Um. Okay. So Charles was born two hundred years ago. He was born as a werewolf, and the story is that um. Blue Jay woman, which is his mother, was a werewolf, but she was also a witch and she was able to stop yes. herself from changing and aborting the pregnancy. So Charles was born, but also she deaded. So good yeah. job, Charles. Um, and <laughs> Bran, what? <laughs> Nothing. Just, that's really mean. You killed your mother. He's not real. He can't hear me. Um, <laughs> Okay. Sorry. Um <laughs> You have my soul. So, uh Brand uh, sorry, Charles is act I don't, like I said I don't really remember how much we talked about Charles cuz he's not that big of a he is a big deal but he's not. Um but Charles is You probably Brand's haven't spoken about him much. Brand's like enforcer executioner. So if Brand's like, yo, this wolfie be a prob, yo, Charles is like, I got it. Rawr. And kills Which him. is how he met the yeah. other MC, Anna. Um, and Charles Charles and Mercy have kind of a weird <clears throat> relationship, but like they like each other enough or whatever. Um and Charles is like a very so Charles Okay, he's broody. But it's not annoying because no, you're like, you just, yeah, I get it. Like you're, you're like, yeah, I, I get why I, you're brooding. I, I feel like I get Charles as well because like he's a heavily introverted character and I like it. I do too. And like, like I said, he's broody, but there's a good reason. And the reason why he's broody and is like, I don't want to fucking talk to anybody is because he's his dad. He's his dad's assassin. So if you get too close to people, you still might have to you kill might them. Have to. Yeah. So he tries to keep himself at a distance. Which, which makes sense. Yeah, it all makes sense. And but I he's like also it. not all I know, but he's also not all oh, woe is me. I have to kill people. He's like, someone's gotta do it. Might as well be me. Yeah, and he's like that's like that's Maury's attitude. 
Yeah, um, and so his broodiness makes sense, and it's not obtrusive. Um, no. And it would make sense for him to be, like, a super right. person. Either. Yeah. So it's fine. Um, if that yeah. rain gets too noisy, let me know, and I'll find a place inside. I can't even hear it. Okay. You're all good. <laughs> um, okay, so the next one is, like, your second MC is Anna. And yep. Anna is yep. an Omega wolf, which means that she falls outside of the pack structure. So... In the I finally worked it out. Cause yeah, can you fucking explain it to me? Because I'm like, I get it, but also the okay, way that the pack st structure is explained, it doesn't make that much sense either. Okay, so we so this isn't for you. This is for everyone. Um, so pack structure is you know alpha, most dominant wolf, and then it goes down the rank to lowest, which is submissive generally, or the most submissive. Now, that's that. And what the submissive brings to the pack is that because they have no need for dominance, they're trusted, they're this, they're that, yay. Uh, um, and if the alpha goes, you've got to do with this, everyone's like, i I, I got to do with this. They can't not. Yeah, um, it's like you, you're magically bound to do it. Like, if so, yeah. if your alpha says, go sit in the corner and rock like a baby, like... Unless you're more dominant you than, than they are, yeah. then you have to. And it works it works like that as the pack structure goes on. And I think we've also talked about this. Um, the women get their standing mates. in the pack from their mates. So yeah. even if, like, you had a very – a super, like, submissive female werewolf, if she was mated to the alpha – then you get to borrow the, it like literally works that like you borrow the power from the alpha and you do the stuff. Yeah. But you'd find though her being a submissive, she wouldn't ever really actually use that. It's just lower ranking pack members couldn't control her mainly. Hypothetically. It, it doesn't. Yeah. Hypothetically. <laughs> um, but Omega's right. They're not like brand can't order Anna around because she Which is actually be... super interesting. I like yes, it. Yes, I like that. But oh, at the, the same time... Out and I'm just like... <laughs> blow it. Sorry. <laughs> so pretty much they can't be ordered around, but so, but they also have the same protective nature as, an, as a more dominant wolf or a compassionate dominant wolf. So... Pretty much what they bring to the pack is an, more of an ease than a submissive because they can't be controlled yet. It's in their instinct to bring happiness. It's not just a byproduct. Right. I think. And, um. I think. <laughs> yeah. And she also has, like, the ability to literally, like, magically soothe people. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, and ultimately, like, in this whole thing, it is like the cardinal sin number one, apparently, to change an omega at all into a werewolf because they are so precious. So it's very taboo to change one, and especially and then changing one. Yeah. I think because that an omega personality is so rare that it's to be protected. Yeah. Um, right, so she's an Omega, um, and she's Charles's mate. Yes. Um, and um, Anna has been severely abused. So if you remember Moon Called, which, me either. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Book one. So in Moon Called, Mac, who, like, is... <laughs> sorry about the fucking lighting. Um, who, like I said, I'm still... <laughs> A little fucking salty about, um, yeah. Be, give me. A I sec. know. Hold on. Give me a sec. I'll be right okay. back. Okay. Well, well, she's gone. Um, Mac in Moon Called, he was forcibly changed against his will and then sold and escaped, and then he dabbed. Well, he tells them that it was Leo, the alpha of one of the Chicago packs, that changed him. 
And so that's where the novella kicks off, where Charles goes to Chicago to be like, yo, Leo, WTF. Um, and lighting so and, fucking weird. That'll teach me to give a fuck about sunlight. Um, <laughs> sorry. Like, everything's closed. Like, oh, no, I'm sorry. Um, but so Leo is, like, Mac... Leo changed Mac to do, like, experiments in Moon Called. Well, he sold him to the experiment sold door. Him. Whatever. Yeah. Um, um, but, okay, so in... Because I'll just give a really quick rundown of what happened in the novella. Um, pretty much, Anna called... I can't remember why. She decides to call Bran, though, to be like, yo, this shit is happening here. And he's like... And they already knew what happened, and they're like, well, tell us what you know. Wait, so who she, she tell? calls them. Bran. Okay. Because she got slipped Bran's number by um, the PAX third. Because um, he couldn't call Bran himself because he'd been ordered not to tell Bran um, what was going on. So he couldn't. So he gave it to her because he worked out what she was and knew that she couldn't be controlled. Right. Um, <clears throat> And so she'd been a werewolf for three years, and so she calls Bran, and Bran sends out Charles, and she meets Charles at the airport, and then they have this. I can forgive the insta romance type aspect because as soon as he sees her, he's like, "I'm my wolf wants her now" type thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and she she thought she was a submissive wolf. She didn't know she was an omega. Um, and pretty much, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, now I can a little bit hear it. It's not too bad, though. Um, pretty much what happened was the reason she was changed, she was changed by this really vile, violent werewolf um, that would have been put down in any other circumstance. And what happened was Leo realized that she was an Omega and his mate was going insane. So he got Justin to change her. And then he... Um, but he didn't want his wife to, or his mate to kill her because his wife was insanely jealous of all other women. Mm -hmm. But she was a massive fool who slept around. Really weird dynamic. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, she, she, right? more or less, yeah, she, she got to, well, what happened was she went insane and then decided to kill all the other females in the pack. And then their mates wanted to kill her. So then Leo had all of, all of the mates killed. Um, and then. Um, she started replacing all the dead werewolves with really hot guys. <laughs> and then... And then... So he gets his Omega, so she stops going insane. Um, but... So she wouldn't get jealous of Anna and kill her. He, he passed Anna around to literally everyone in the pack, got them to beat her, rape her, all this shit. So then his mate would be like, no, Leo, you need to stop. I will protect her now. So she chose to save her as opposed to wanting to kill her out of jealousy. So that's that whole situation. And that made Charles go, grr, and he killed her. Or he killed, he killed Leo and the guy that turned her. I like that you, you've adopted my... <laughs> So Charles does. Um, so yeah. other characters in this book, Azil the Moor, and we find out a whole lot more uh, about the Moor. First of all, he's Muslim. Allahu Akbar. Yes. May peace be upon him. Um, whatever. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so he, his wife's name is Sarai. Was yes. And they. Was. Um, raised a witch named, they like adopted and raised a witch named Mariposa, which there's a Barbie yes. movie called Mariposa. It's one yes. of the fairy topia movies. And the entire time I'm like, so in my head, Mariposa is a butterfly fairy. <laughs> well, it does mean butterfly. I know. Like, and they mentioned that and I'm like, wow. So that's why they named her that in the Barbie movie. And in my head, she's fucking... She's a butterfly fairy. Uh, I can't help it because 
Like in my head, Mariposa literally looks like how Mariposa looks like in the Barbie movie. And yeah, I got, and it's a really good. But it's one of the good. It's one of the better Barbie. You know what? They're all good, but that's not the point. It's one of the really good ones. I like it. I love that. Mariposa. One. That's the one where she has the brown eyes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. I like in the first Mariposa, you know the the yeah. girl. I forget what her name is, but you know the girl that plays Nori and uh, um. She plays uh, the green, the green fairy with a uh, pink hair in the first Fairytopia. Oh, vaguely, yeah. It's she's got like the really scratchy voice, mm. and she's usually a bitchy character. Oh, she plays Lila in um in the fuck Swan Princess. She plays Lila in Swan Princess. She plays um. Penelope, in, which is the dragon in Rapunzel. No, she doesn't. That's a lie. That's all a lie. Just kidding. <laughs> Either way. That's all a lie. And it doesn't fucking matter. But in the second but in the second Mariposa movie, it's Barbie again, who's... That was my... I'm sorry. Um, so... <laughs> and what happened... And what happened was... Um, Mar they sent off Mariposa because she was killing things, which was rude, and uh, trying to poison Sarai because she wanted to fuck Azeel. Um, yes. And so they send her away, and then she comes back, and then she captures Sarai and tortures her and turns her into, like, a guardian, which is a thing that yeah. you can... It's like, you can be like, yo, it, mirror, and it, like, mirrors, and it protects you. And it also... Uh, yeah. That's what it is. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm with it. Um, and so Azil's all upset about that. And basically, Mariposa also wanted to make Azil a guardian. And Azil's been running. And Azil had the bright idea not to tell the frame he, what the fuck was actually going on. His, yeah, because she absorbed the mate bond so she can track him through that. Right. Because. So mate bonds tend to do like a special thing for each pair of people. And Azeel and Sarai's mate bond allowed them to track each other. So it was well, like a... I think I think most mate bonds you can you can at least vaguely get a sense of the other one's whereabouts anyway. Yeah, but they could like GPS. Yeah, that's true. They, they she like made a big yeah. deal out of it, which is why I'm making a big deal yeah. out of it. Um, so Azil's all tortured, and he's like, Bran, kill me. And Bran's like, we buds, no. yo. Don't wanna. And then... <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then he's like, all right, and I'm gonna go play with flowers. And then Bran's like, okay. And then, like, two days later, he's like, kill me now. And Bran's like, nah, fam. And he's like, I, whatever. <laughs> um... Yeah, so Azeel's Az been trying for, what, like 15 years to get Bran to kill him? Yeah. <laughs> so she can't find him? Like, he could just drown himself, but he's decided not to. Um, which is fine. Well, I, don't I, think it's like it's all, I think it's also because he doesn't actually want to die. Which is why Bran's not going to kill him. Um, yeah. Okay. The other character is Walter, who is a vet oh, that got forcibly changed and... It doesn't fucking matter. A, 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 a bat, bat, not a, not a bitchy bat. Oh yeah, yeah, like a nom. Like back in my day, we used guns instead of guns to kill people. <laughs> that kind of um. What? Sorry, I'm, I keep muting myself because of the rain. But <laughs> old man voice. <laughs> I don't know how old he actually is. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, old enough to, you know, be like, and mm, nom, um, things happened. Yeah, but now he's young again, remember, because he's got wolfified. Yeah, like, he's hot because he's, like, a wolf, but I'm just saying he's so he's, like, the same age as Adam. Hmm. Because Adam They're is also old and enough. Because Adam is also old enough to be like, back in my day, we had a nom. <laughs> 
whatever. Um, oh, Anna's 23. <laughs> which is interesting. Why? I don't know. Because all of the other characters in this in the Mercy verse are old. Other than like Jesse and Gabriel and Tad. Everybody else is it, it's either like everybody's a teenager or a kid or like 30 or hundreds like should be in a nursing home being like raisins like that kind of <laughs> nobody's 20 something in these books that's true no it's um yeah it's it's nice to have a werewolf that's you know that looks their actual age yeah because everybody looks 12 it's just that nobody is 12 <laughs> and by 12 i mean i look 25 ish um yeah. Which, okay. My, my. I've never had, like, so you know how Damon's, like, 165 or whatever, and Elena's, like, 20? Yeah. For whatever reason, that age difference in the, in the Vampire Diaries in the show doesn't bother me. And neither Damon does... Damon acts in, like a child. Well, yeah, and it doesn't bother me in Twilight either. In this one, I'm like, he's a dirty old man. <laughs> I think it's because he's broody. Yeah, but I think not, it's because he's broody. But, but, not, like, but, not, but, but why is broody not? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like he acts like an adult. <laughs> so him being with somebody who's like 23, I'm like, especially because as well, she's so broken like, like yeah because like in twilight right Emotionally like Bella doesn't damaged. have a personality so i don't care she has a personality no she's funny if you no, actually she does, not. she does she she has some quippy lines she she can do a quip every so often that's that does not a personality make she read a book and quoted it or something no, she's she, actually, watched, she actually does have some funny no, lines no. in the books. I'm just saying. She does. True. It has been. She does. But it's also. And so does Edward for that not, matter. Edward's, Edward in the, in the Twilight books is actually funny and is actually pretty interesting. Once yeah. you get past the brooding vampire part. That's a bit. But we are like so off track. Um, <laughs> sorry. But, <clears throat> so she's 23. But, you know. And all damaged. And I also, yeah, but I also like the fact that her her wolf took over during a lot of the bad stuff. So she's damaged, but she's not like, oh my god, can you just get over it already? From a reader's perspective, damaged, which is nice. I'm a little bit there, but that's because I don't, I don't like I think, reading about damaged people. <laughs> Well, you know what? Yeah. The thing is, it's just, it's, she she sexually abused, and here's the thing. I get it. Character development is important, but these characters are the most annoying pieces of shit on the planet. I know, but I, they are so irritating. Again, they're like, it looks like, though, she's, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's not going to be as painful as the Mercy one. Yeah, it doesn't get harped on. And honestly, I'm glad that we're not in Anna's head because she's, like, nervous all the time and she's constantly a nervous wreck. Which, this doesn't have any bearing on anything, on my opinions on anything in real life, okay? I get it. People got issues and anxiety is a thing. I completely understand that. And I completely understand right. dealing with it and learning to live with it and learning to function. Around. Like, I get it. It's this is entertainment. That, it's just that, like, I want to go punch stuff, and you're in a corner crying your eyes out, and I'm annoyed because I want to go on an adventure, not read a sob story. There's a corner over there. That's why I'm it's fucking... No, that's like... Whatever. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Okay, so Walter, yeah, Walter's, like, a nom, whatever. Um... Who else is in this he fucking book? Then Bran's a person. Um, oh, Sage. Yes. We'll go with Sage next. So Sage is a wolf yep. in Aspen Creek, and she has a weird 
The narrator can't right. do a southern accent to save his life. It's not as bad as the um Dark Elements southern accent. Oh though. my god. <laughs> I oh. do declare. <laughs> like <laughs> that was so fucking funny. Cause like <laughs> you get to like the big villain fight in that audiobook, and all of a sudden it's like Oh, hello. I didn't expect to see you here. And I'm like, this is the least menacing voice you could have chosen to give a fucking character. Because they gave him that really awkward cadence as well. Yeah, yeah. It was like, it was just well, like... I don't want to raise a demon from hell, but I guess if I have to, I'll do it for my love. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> It's really bad. Um, <laughs> I died when I got when I, we got to the villain. I was just like, oh. <laughs> no, I was laughing so hard when we got to that because I'm like, all right, boss fight. Because I think of everything in terms of video game mechanics, and um, <laughs> and it was like, I do declare this is the boss fight, and I was like, what the fuck is happening? Because um, no, that was even more triggering for you because, you know, you're from the South. <laughs> you live there. <laughs> <laughs> it was so mad. It was so fucking weird. Um, <laughs> okay. Anyway. Oh, we are, like, so off topic. Um, what were we saying? <laughs> We, we never said that we stay on topic, okay? If you're here for people that stay on topic, go watch people something stay else. on topic. Um, go watch Scribe. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, Alpha and Omega. Uh, Sage. I think that's, yeah, so Sage is just a person. Um, and then we get more of Leah. Leah's a bitch. But what you find out you know about what, Bran, can I say... Because, like, I'm kind of like, Leah's a bitch, but bitch, I get it. So, Bran decided, because he was super in love with Charles's dead mom. Well, his wolf decided. Right, and his wolf is like, we need a mate. So, what Bran decided to do was settle for somebody that he didn't love. Because he couldn't bring himself to love someone ever again. And he brought somebody else into that bullshit. Bran, what the fuck, dude? That is so... That's fucked up. But in my I think opinion. part of why... But, but part of why he chose Leia as well was because she was an incredibly self-centered, selfish bitch. That's true. But, like, you ain't helping. Yeah, and, like, for the majority of this book, it's still like, yeah, Leia's a cow. But just that last scene where she's like curled up on his side of the bed, hugging his pillow, I was just like, "Oh, well, yeah." It's it's actually really sad because like she, I get her a bit more now. Like nobody. No wonder she hates Messi so much. Literally, nobody's ever gonna love her, and that's. I don't know. Like, that's just Cause, fucked cause up. Because Mate bonds it forever. Yeah, like, she can't get rid of that. It's And Bran treats her a little bit like shit. And she kind of mean... treats him a bit like shit, too. But yeah, but, like, at I the same it. time, he's the one you. I, I would, I would, yeah, I would, I would, ugh. Like, I'm not, yeah. I'm not Sorry. team anybody in this, but I'm team set Leah free and just let her go. Yeah. Like, I wish they could, you know, I don't know. It's just like, oh. You know. Yeah, he, because. I don't know, like, he, he should, he should love her. Maybe she wouldn't be such a miserable cow to everyone. If I mean, like, her. I would be fucking miserable if I was stuck married to somebody who didn't actually love me and, like, was just using me and then I couldn't get out of it because magic. I'd be a fucking miserable bitch, too. Yeah. It's... It's super... It's the super sads. Um, okay. Yeah. So, what, <laughs> I guess? I'll let you... Do the Alpha Omega novella plot because SDA didn't read it. Well, pretty much, 
Yeah, so Anna calls Bran, Bran sends Charles, which he was going to do anyway, um, and he tells Anna that Mac is deaded. They are trying to not acknowledge the fact that they have a thing for each other. Um, until, I, I think, I can't remember why, but he ends up just, just saying, like, ordinarily I would court you. Because that was, it was so cute. Because he actually keeps on referring to, like, you know, him wanting to court her. Because his wolf's like, she's our mate, yo. And he's like, I, um, but we've got to do this proper. Because, like, he's never been really interested in anyone before. Um, oh, which actually, cute. I think that's the, that's cute. I think Mercy even point. I think Mercy even points out in the first book that really the only way he would be able to get a mate is if she was an Omega. <laughs> I think she I even said. I don't remember that, in that. I mean, like, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying. Yeah. That I don't remember. Um, um, sorry. But um. But she starts learning that, like, because he knows straight away she's an Omega. She thinks she's a submissive. Um, she knows absolutely nothing about much at all because Leo's kept it pretty much in the dark because he okay. doesn't want her to run away. You know what? You know what bothers me? This is what bothers me about the relationship, and I think this is why the age difference is glaring to me. Um, I think it has less to do with the age difference and more to do with the power dynamics. Because she's so clueless about everything. Yeah, and she's super traumatized and dealing with trauma. Yeah. And mm, so that, yeah, I think I, that's why I'm like, I don't like it because and it's a personal thing, but I'm, and I'm not going to go into yeah. it. But it. It just, I'm kind of like, mm. like if you were going to, yeah, okay, I think I'll say this. If you were going to set up an abusive relationship, having that much of a power difference between the two people in the relationship is exactly how I would do it. I'll put it that way. I guess, but at the, at the same time, though, as well, I think she, I think that might be why she made Charles so hurt in Thingy. Um, and because that have they start they start that in Alpha, um, in Alpha Omega as well, where um, Charles gets um, Isabella Leo's mate tries to shoot Anna, but gets Charles and. Um, that oh fuck, and she her presence is pretty much the only thing that keeps him chill and stuff. So she kind of does have the power to like some sort of power over him to an extent as well. So it's not as I mean, it's still bad in the sense of like he's she's clueless about everything, she's like stumbling through this all, like through all of this, and he's just like, We're made it, and she's like. But I don't know what that means. It's like, it doesn't matter. We're made it. So there is that. Um, <clears throat> but I don't know. Like, I, it, it didn't bother me as much, I don't think. But I think that's, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's because it, we see a lot of how much he wants to protect her in the novella. Yeah, and I get that, and I don't think I really missed out on anything like that from re from not reading the novella. Yeah, um, it's just I don't know. Yeah, it's, just it, it's a like, it's weird. No, that, that 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 is a fair assessment though. That there is a lot of like she's she's got no idea about any sort of dynamic at all about or anything about wolves. Um, she just. Cause it, it, cause I, one of the things that she was struggling to come to terms with in this book as well was the fact that Charles is dominant and protective and possessive of her, but that's not inherently a bad thing. But the reason she, her instincts are saying this is a bad thing is because she'd been abused in the first book and stuff like that. So I, I do get that as well. Like it's, that is a bit, but they have cute moments. No, and they do. 
<laughs> it's, I can't think of it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how I feel about it. Um, I've actually already started reading the next book, by the way, Faye, so catch up. Um, I, I almost like, did that. I couldn't be bothered plugging my phone back into my computer to put it on. Because <laughs> I, 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 of sheer laziness. I actually like the second book a little bit better. Um, oh, really? Yeah, so far. Uh, all right, so I think we can get into the plot. So that's what happens in the novella. Yeah, yeah he rescues her. He... he Grr, grr, um, people and then it the first, then the actual book kicks off morning after so yeah so the morning after we wake up and we take Plan B I'm just kidding that's a joke anyway um Plan B is a you know what Plan B never mind is that the morning after pill <laughs> um, yeah it's not funny if I have to explain it Mara sorry babe <laughs> um. <laughs> So we kick off, and they're headed to Aspen Creek. And, um, you know, she's all being squirrely. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so scared. And Bran's like, I'm not going to hurt you, blah, blah, blah. And Charles is like, ugh, I'm hurt. Um, oh, you <laughs> wanted to say about, like, about his voice? Oh, yes, fuck. No, you haven't. So you haven't um, think, I want you listened to, to the Harry you. Potter um, audiobooks, but Crab and Goyle, the voice that you could imagine that someone would do for them in an audiobook, that's Charles's voice in this. You know what? I actually disagree. Think of the most stereotypical Native American voice you can think of. And oh. that's Charles's voice. That's what it is. <laughs> I don't know. It sounds like it's a bit of a. It sounds like he's got a broken nose. So exactly. He's got, yeah, he's got like that weird, like Native American rumble thing that people like to give Native Americans. No, nose. but it sounds like. But but you know how um, like when someone's got a broken nose, how they can't quite enunciate a word properly. Like it, it just comes out like there's something broken. He sounds like, like Pocahontas's just, dad from Pocahontas from Pocahontas. He sounds like the chief from Pocahontas. With a blocked nose. What? <laughs> With yeah. a blocked nose. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> that's how he sounds, too. Like, that's how they make old Native American <clears throat> really Sorry, I've got a bit of a blocked nose right now as well, myself. It's like a whole thing. I don't, I mean, like, it's literally a thing. I don't like it. I'm not saying it's good or a bad thing. I'm just like, well, Native American much was my first thought. You know, it also makes him sound like a million years older. Than like he should sound, but either way, um, yeah. So they, yeah, like they're like on their he way. He shouldn't to be talking that way because he was raised by a Welshman. He speaks Welsh. I don't I don't know. <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, <laughs> so they <laughs> they go to Aspen Creek, and of course she's like freaking out. And then they get there, and um, oh, this like, yeah, because sorry, this th these these ones are narrated by a dude, not a chick. BT dubs. Um, yeah. So they go to Aspen Creek, they get there, and uh, Charles is like, I just want to go home. And they're like, I. So they take him home, and then Anna gets into his house, and she's like, Oh my God, this is like a house. It's so weird. Um, <laughs> then it's a little awkward, and <laughs> what? That's what happens. And then he sleeps. Um, and then. They oh, because Charles, because Charles's changes aren't like the fifteen-minute-long pain fest shit that. Oh right, yeah. So Charles is a wolf, by the way. Right now, I forgot yeah. about that. Because I was like, something. Yeah, okay. So Charles is a wolf. So they get home, and he's like, "I'm gonna talk to you. So I'm gonna go fucking." Mm. And so he changes, and it makes everything worse. And she's like, "Why would you do that?" And like to get revenge on him, which this part was actually really funny and cute. She wraps him in like fluorescent pink bandages. Yeah. Which was really, it was cute. I, I was like, this is cute. Um, I was like, it's cute. Yeah. And then. I find so, his changes fun. Because he, he, when he, when he changes from wolf to person, because he's got like his, like, woo-woo magic happening. Um, his changes are really, really quick. Like, not instantaneous like Mercy's, but like, you know, like more of like a 10 second change as opposed to a 15 minute change. And yeah. he changes fully clothed. 
Well, because he, he has clothes on when he changes. He them. conjures <laughs> clothes for himself because yeah, he doesn't the, like the, being naked. The spirits give him clothes, which is nice. I like it. So he changes back, and she's like, "Why would you do that? You're gonna rip shit open!" Oh my god! And like bandages him, and then they go. So if you remember Moon Called, which neither do I. Um, <laughs> Doc Wallace dies because the whole thing was like. To get and he somebody. he's an animal stitchy vet, not a vet, bang bang. Yeah, vet. he's a, yeah. So he's a, a dog vet, not a. Back in my day, we had guns <laughs> vet. Um, although he is old. <laughs> and uh, he was he he was changed by Brand. So There's a whole thing in Moon called. Um, if you want, really want the lowdown on that, but anyway, Brand ends up having to kill him because he can't he can't wolf correctly. Um, and so we got to go to Doc Wallace's funeral. And it's a funeral for sure. Uh, everybody's like, oh my god, Bran, I can't believe like you killed him. Like, how could you? And then Samuel is like, you sons of bitches, you upset that he killed somebody. He had to. Doc Wallace would have... And then... And then they're like, nah. And he's like, yeah. And so it's like a whole thing. Um, and, then, and then Doc Wallace saves the day from beyond the grave with his pre-written note saying, yo, Bran, sing me a song because you're a good guy and shit. Not that it does anything to fucking relieve the tension, but, you know, I mean, it's a funeral where your murderer's present, so, you know, it's bound to, it's bound to be a little <laughs> bit awk. Um, so, right, so after that, because Sam's there. Azeel hits on Anna. Oh, right, Azeel hits on Anna, and Azeel's like, I want to fuck you, and Anna's like, oh my god, ill. And then Azeel's like, does something where he's like, I am a tortured soul. And she's like, oh, and like pets him. And then the Omega shit happens. And he's like, oh, that was nice. And so then <laughs> that's what happens. Because his mate happens. was an Omega. We didn't mention that. Oh, his mate was an Omega, by the way. So he's also like, I want because it reminds me of mate. Um, and then they go outside and uh, Sam's like, I got to look you over by yourself and Anna's like okay I'll just go sit in the corner so she leaves they go to the doctor's office and and Sam like patches up Charles and Bran's like yep, you know you're acting Bran's like you acting crazy foo and he's like what and he's like you this making this Jamaican you crazy and he's like well I guess so um so then he goes home no that's not what happens next see this is the part where like jumping around gets me all confused because then he's like I'm gonna have Sage go over and babysit. But before Sage gets yeah. there, Leah shows up to be a bitch for no reason. And then Sage, and she's like, ah, you're and a then, person. Urgh. I really hope in one of the later books they explain why she doesn't, like, why when she realizes that she's an Omega, um, Leah loses a shit. Oh, right, because Leah tries to, like, be a bitch, and then um, and she's like, sit, go sit. And no, no, no. Like, well, what happens is, like, Leah's a bitch, and then Sage walks in, and she's like, well, now that I'm here, you can fuck off. And Leah's like, fuck you, Sage. And Sage is like, yeah, I guess I have to, because, you know, you are a person. Um, you're important. <laughs> and then she tries to do it. She's like, uh, you know, uh, Anna, go fucking sit. And Anna's like, no, thank you, is the exact wording, <laughs> which made me like her. I was like, that's funny as hell. But she's just like, I'm good. And Leah's like, you're an Omega. <laughs> and then leaves. Um, yeah, I really want to know why. Because she's like, oh my god, of course Charles brought one of you here. I, I, I need to know why. Yeah, I don't know. Magister said SDA notes are so much better than Cliff notes. <laughs> Thanks, I they appreciate are. it. This is also how I outline my novels. And they gets to read it my is. outlines. It dead set <laughs> this is dead set exactly how my outlines yeah. sound. And I'm like, I shouldn't even write it. Like, why am I writing a book? I could just publish outlines. and it, like People would buy them. People would buy them. Um, so then Sage is like, well, that was, she's a piece of work. And she's like, yeah, I guess so. And so then Charles gets home and he's like, thanks, Sage. And Sage, like, Sage is like, all right, bye, Charlie. We had fun. All right, bye. <laughs> and then she leaves. Um, and then Bran is like, hey, yo, we got a rogue doing a thing. And they're like, well, I guess in a couple of days. And then it's like, oh, snippity snap. The rogue attacked somebody who knows about, attacked somebody's fucking niece. And then like, the, what's his name? Tag? Is his name Tag? 
Yeah, Tag's niece, niece's friend gets attacked while she's there, and she thinks and he's... of course, crazy. Tag's niece's friend is a fucking blabbermouth, so... It's really... Why is there a Tag and a Tad? I don't fucking know. There's a fuck ton of characters. You're bound to have some overlap. They, well, they keep, I know, but they keep, they keep mentioning Tag, and, like, if, if he hadn't been mentioned for a while, it's just like, when did Tad come into... Oh, Tag. Never mind. <laughs> Yeah, so it was confusing, right? So, um, so Tag is like, if you kill him, I'm gonna be Gur, and they're like, yeah, but he's a fucking blabbermouth, you ass. So they have to go take care of the rogue so that they can show human pants that they do their own yeah, thing. You know what though? They never wrapped up that part of the storyline. No, they realized. didn't. They kind of forgot about it. I just realized, but I don't care because I don't give a shit. Um. I know, I but it, even just a simple mention of they, they, he, he, he and the human kept his fucking mouth shut. Like that would have been. Yeah, there wasn't awesome. even that. There was nothing. Yeah, it's not even. Yeah, there's nothing. Um, so Tag goes out and gets him, and then they come back, and he's all like, "I'm dying, and I'm gonna tell everybody about the wolf." <laughs> and. Well, he doesn't actually threaten to. They just know that. Yeah, he's like he's fucking asleep. Um. Well, SDA is a vape lord. Have a good stream. Yeah, I started. I feel like I can't be right wing without having a vape, so I got one. Uh, thank you. Point. <laughs> but. Because <laughs> so. I have to get a new one. Because, like I said, this one's wobbly. I think my next. One, I'm gonna get a different one and get a pink one. So. After that, they're like, all right, I guess we got to go out, like, right fucking meow. And so they do. Um, and then they kind of hike around in the woods for a They really, like, half this book is just them dicking around in the woods doing nothing. But they find Walter eventually. Well, he and, finds them. Well, he finds them. And they're like, you're, you were changed. And he was like, I was changed by the thing. And you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, wait, before that. Before that. <laughs> so sorry. many different points of view. I know, okay, but, like, the thing is, like I said, we can kind of skip over a bunch of stuff because it's them just kind of walking around. Um, but then they come to a stop, and and um, Walter attacks them because she, because Walter knows that Charles is a wolf, and he's like, oh, fuck, he's going to eat Anna, and then attacks Charles, but, like, doesn't try to hurt him, just tries to get him away, and then they... Oh, they, like, before, leave. before this, they do the fuck to seal their mate bond, and it didn't work, and then Charles goes to Azeel and he's like, yo, oh, what yeah, happens when that. an Omega gets tortured and Azeel thinks he's just poking at him, making fun of his dead mate, and he's like, ah, and <sighs> runs away. I think Charles would do. Whatever. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, they're in the woods, or, and like they've just been dicking around for a while, and so I guess it's now time for some shit to go down. So, Walter's like, Rawr, get away from her. But uh, he's a wolf, so he doesn't actually say that. But that's what he's thinking. Mm -hmm. And then Charles, yeah. like, goes after him. And then while Charles is out there chasing him, um, Mariposa comes up to Anna. And she's like, oh, my God, you're, like, a human. Like, what are you doing out here? Like, isn't this cray-cray? It's, like, so winter. And Anna, <laughs> being a fucking moron, isn't like, who the fuck be you? She's just like, oh, my husband and, like, weird stuff. Ha-ha. <laughs> And then Charles gets back and is like, the fuck is going on? And Anna's like, you went to chase a bear to get a lighter. And he's like, um. Yes, I like, did. And then he like sniffs the the witch because Mariposa's a witch. And then he's like, we should stop playing games. You're a witch. And she's like, oh my God, how'd you figure it out? I guess I smell funny. And then um, <laughs> she like holds Charles in place with a magic taffy web. That's how it's described. <laughs> And she's like, where the fuck is Azeel? And Azeel, and she's like, Azeel's at Daspin Creek. And she's like, oh, tell me more. And then while that's going down, Anna's like getting like taffy web off her and then like goes and grabs it off of Charles and then breaks the spell. And then they make a fucking mad Gone. dash away. And then they're like, maybe we should call Bran. And then they're like, maybe we shouldn't call Bran. And then they run into Walter and they're like, what's up, Walter? And Walter's like, hi. And then Walter's like, oh my God, this is a Michael Wolf is better than weed and goes to sleep. Um, <laughs> this is exactly what happens. Um, no, no, Jack. Jack, Jack and Chad. Oh. 
Bears don't have lighters. <laughs> don't <laughs> um, So then, like, he goes to sleep. And then Azil so shows up. And he's like, I am so sorry. I didn't realize that your maid had actually been tortured. And he's like... Why? Wait. Yeah, can... <clears throat> I'm not gonna lie, I didn't know that Azil. I thought he was like Spanish or something. Not he is Spanish, but he's Middle Eastern. No, he's not. Sort of. Well, the mud slimes invaded Spain <sighs> way back when. I know, but I know, but I didn't realize he was Middle Eastern and not. But he's you know, not. Like just he's Spanish. not. Spanish people and Mediterranean people look slightly Middle Eastern. I know, but they made such an emphasis on him being, like, Muslim and Middle Eastern looking. Yeah, but, like, that could be any but, Spanish person or anybody from the Mediterranean. I mean, it's kind of... I, I know, that. I know, I, I know, but I just... I, I, just, I well, never no, pictured like, him as anything other than being, like... Brown. Yeah, I never... Yeah, I just never pictured him as being anything other than, like, one of the Mediterranean-looking Spanish people. Which is pretty much what he would look like if he's Middle Eastern. I know, I know, but... Anyway. Um, sorry. <laughs> anyway. So, he goes to sleep, and then Azil shows up, and he's like, I'm so sorry, what can I do? And then Sarai shows up and is like, oh, I'm a wolf. And then Azil's like, I'm going to go run after her. And Charles is like, all right, bye. And then Bran wakes up and is like, something's wrong. <laughs> And just sits up in bed. And he's like, witch. He's like, Lord, witch. I wonder what it could mean. And I'm like, I don't fucking know, Bran. Maybe it means there's a fucking witch. Anyway. Um, and so he calls Sam. So Samuel calls him. And he's like, you told me to wake up. And Bran's like, what's up, bro? And he's like, what's going on? And he's like, I don't know. And then it's like, witch. And I'm like, maybe there's a fucking witch, Bran. And then... <laughs> Bran is like, Charles is in trouble and there's a witch. I gotta go! And then, so then he's like, we're off to see the wizard. And literally. Um, and, and Leia's like, fuck you for not talking to me, Bran, and storms off. Yeah. Um, and so Bran... Oh, Leia. Is, I, this, this, this book actually did make me cranky. I, I don't want to feel sorry for Leia in any capacity. And at that stage, I still didn't. But now looking back at that last scene, I, I can't. It tugs. Yeah, it's fucked up. My heartstrings, they have been tugged. Anyway, so. Sorry. <laughs> Bran, okay. Bran. So Bran, yeah, so Bran goes Bran. away. And so then Bran's like off to see the wizard. And then like um, Anna's having a nightmare about Charles being dead. Then Charles wakes her up and he's like, I'm not dead. And you're just having a nightmare. And she's like, oh my God, that's like so good. And then Charles is like, by the way, your heart stopped. And she's like, oh my God, that's so bad. And then <laughs> so we write back. Like, that's good. And, like, you're alive. And I'm very happy about that. So that happens. And then we hip hop to. Walter. What? Poor Walter. Until, like, you know, the night before, he's, he thought all werewolves were bad because he'd only met the one that had turned him. And next thing he knows, like, there's a wolf that calms him and she deads for a second. <laughs> and yeah. there's all this so, nightmare shit. By the way, there's witches. Like, poor guy. So Bran catches up to Azeel, and then uh, the witch is like, oh, you're a wolf, and I don't know who you are, so I'm just going to take you under my thing. And so then Bran does some weird shit with the pack bonds so that they can't stuff. And so then we jump back to Anna and Charles, and they're like, let's go blow up a house. And they go blow up a house, and then they start running away. And then they're like, oh, my God, Bran's actually here. Holy shit, like, that might be, like, important. And then they're like, all right, what do we do to go find Bran? And they're like, well... We go back to the house because Azil would be leading them there so that he doesn't come <clears throat> find us so that we have time to escape. So then they run back to Bran and then they kind of sit on a hill and watch Bran and Azil and Sarai and all of them do a fight. And then uh, Sarai and Azil run away and then they run down the hill and then they fight and then it's over. Well, Bran becomes Beowulf for a minute there. Oh, yeah. Bran is... Beowulf. Oh, because yeah, the, the, Beowulf, the Beowulf thing is... Brand. by the way and that's it yes. that's the book and it, it was at that point where they were like we're just gonna sit here on a snowy hill and not draw attention to ourselves and I was like can y'all like go do something interesting now and like get this book over with and they were like nope and I was like great um and that's what happens that's the whole book 
You, you know one thing I'm really curious about? Because at the end of the book, they get married. And, it, like, it's cute. Charles calls, like, her dad and her brother, who she hasn't spoken to for years, because Leo was like, I'm going to kill him if you talk to him. Um, I'm curious if Leo Mercy was at the wedding. Alpha, by the way, not Leah, because with her accent. Yeah, Leo. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I just. Yeah. I'm wondering if Mercy was at the wedding, because Charles does, like, you work out as the Mercy books go on. He's a lot more fond of her than he lets on. Yeah. And they also did that whole Native American bonding thing. Like he took her out to do her the rite of passage quest or whatever. Yeah. That. Yeah. Um, yeah. And she's not mentioned. I just, I'm just curious if she's there. Probably. Yeah. Um, I'd hope and so. then you also get the update that Samuel is now living with Mercy and shit like that. So now you know where we are. Um, and that's that book. And like I said, I liked it. I think the setting was also one of my problems with the book because the setting made it boring. Because we're just up in the snow and it's cold. I know. Well, there was also like a half chapter of Anna just being like, oh, look, that's pretty. And Charles being like, yes, it is. Oh, look, that's pretty. Yes, it is. By the way, Charles, you're cute too. He's like, yes, I am. <laughs> like, that's true. Um, <laughs> there was there was yeah. literally half a chapter of them just going for a bushwalk type thing and her admiring the view, both nature and Charles wise. That's the whole book. Um, when do you want to do the second one? Um, I don't know when. I, I I need to read it. If it's, you can do it it's Sunday, my Sunday morning, your Sunday night, right? Yeah, that's how this works. It's like yeah, two that days. Should be enough time. Yeah, because yeah, that should be fine. We have Baywatch tomorrow. Yeah. We do too. Well, two days for me, but yeah. yeah. So yeah. Because, yeah, we're actually going to be doing Baywatch this week because we've had a few weeks off for multiple ongoing reasons. Yep. So. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. You know, it. it was, I, I liked the book. I'm excited to read the next one. That's for I sure. like So far, I like the next one better. Yeah, I again, it's it was one of those things as well where I think part of the reason why I liked it so much was because we don't really often do good books. And while this was a, while like most of the characters were known to us, we haven't known these characters like this before. So it was something really new. Mm -hmm. It was a new good book. Yeah. And I was just like, like, like I, I actually didn't stop listening. Like I pressed play. And I didn't even pause at all once. See, I did, but that's because I had shit to do. Well, I yeah, also because I listened on double speed, so I wasn't listening for 10 hours straight, but like, See, it was like I five listened, hours. But I listened to these books not on double speed because when it's – plots are more complicated. So double yeah. speed works when we're – for me, when we're listening to it, like when we're listening to like a – you know, Jennifer L. Arm and Trout, and we just want to get through it. But for this, it kind of didn't work out. It doesn't work out because I, I get lost. So I listen to it at like 1.25 or 1.5. Yeah. Because it also makes the narrator sound like he's speaking at a fucking normal pace. I know audiobook narrators do read really slow, which I get. I get why like, they do it. It's been ages. I have missed you guys. And I'm like, do you? Stop. Nobody fucking reads like that. Anyway, um, but yeah, so Sunday, Sunday morning, we might actually stream book club from the Baywatch channel um, on Sunday. So if you're not subscribed yes, to the Baywatch channel, please make sure that you are Got notifications it. on. Um, we will give you updates on that. But we are going to be streaming Baywatch from my channel 
Um, and we will have a Baywatch Streamlabs up. Yes. Which you guys. will be exciting. So, yeah. Anyway, um, thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, I hope to see you guys soon. And uh, we will see you guys next time. Bye.